I feel reasonably confident in assuming that this is a Stegosaurus, or at least is supposed to be a Stegosaurus. There's a lot wrong with it, so let's get right into it. Head's way too big. Uh, Stegosaurus had a really small head, even for a Stegosaurian. Uh, head should be about a twelfth the length of its overall body, and, and really narrow. They, it's, it's sort of a wedge in this case. It would be more fluted on the sides, uh, and it's definitely got a, a sort of a convex top on it, and, and you, you need it to be flat on top. Uh, let's see. Eyebrow ridges are clearly um, raised above the level of the head. They, they, it did have eyebrow ridges, but they were straight out. They weren't raised above the, the, the cranium. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but the nostrils are sort of facing forward, and they really should be facing outward to accommodate the beak. Which is another thing, it had a beak. Let's talk about dentition. They, they turned it into a carnivore, which you see a lot in this kind of dinosaur toy. Uh, really inaccurate in this case, because for starters it means that they took away its cheeks, and it needs cheeks. Uh, to accommodate those cheeks, the teeth were inset from the edge of the head. So uh, they weren't around the outer rim like they are on this toy. It's damaged, but you can see that the uh, teeth are supposed to go all the way to the front of the mouth, which is also inaccurate. Uh, stegosaur all Stegosaurians had um, the premaxillary and the predenta teeth gone and replaced by a beak. Except Huayangosaurus, but this is clearly not a Huayangosaurus, so shut up. I mentioned it had cheeks, but uh, the arrangement of its jaw was such that we don't think it was able to actually chew so much as sort of chop. So uh, the previous owner, who I think was named Tony, uh, has filled it with rocks, which is a valiant effort, Tony, but I, I don't think this particular dinosaur, I don't think we've ever found gastrolis associated with an individual of the, the genus Stegosaurus. Would have helped, though. Moving on to the neck. Uh, not terribly inaccurate, actually. They have it, you can, it, it's kind of hard to tell because it's so short, which is also rather accurate. Uh, Stegosaurus had a very short neck, even for a Stegosaurian. But it's held off the ground, clearly. Uh, which, is, which is accurate. It, it would have held its head about three or four feet off the ground. Uh, um, it didn't really have the, the, the S curve like an archosaur, but it, was at least, it at least had its head held up. It wasn't a lizard, despite the name. It's, uh, you can tell it, it clearly lacks throat armor, however. It's just sort of smooth skin. Uh, and I realize not every Stegosaurus was found with neck armor in the... the associated detritus, but some of them had it, so it would be a nice detail to put on the toy. They've done the classic sort of crocodile front leg posture that you see on the quadrupedal toys, which I'm pretty sure is just so that they'll be more stable as toys, or maybe it's supposed to look fierce. Uh, you could argue, they keep doing this to Kentrosaurus too, where they, they, they put the legs out like this for some reason. Uh, I think it's supposed to be an action pose, but if it's supposed to be an action pose, why is its head facing straight forward? Its head should be facing backward, or uh, uh, at a 90 degree angle, so its eye is facing backward, so it's looking at the thing that it's hitting with its tail. So there, I blew a huge hole in your fake argument. That said, the front legs are probably a little too long. Um, Stegosaurus, you'll keep hearing me say this, it was actually not that representative of its family. Like, it, it had the most extreme pronounced ratios of, of the Stegosaurians. So really short front legs in comparison to its hind limbs. Speaking of the hind limbs, the, uh, having the, the femur be that long compared to the lower leg is, is actually not bad. Uh, it had about that ratio. That said, they have it set really high on the animal. Like, they don't seem to have left any room for the hip or the spine. It just sort of goes into the top of the back there. Also, the thigh is not very muscular, especially on the other side. Like, it's got pretty scrawny legs for a stegosaurus. 
But uh, the, uh, the ilium has a low profile, which I guess is accurate, but the, the uh, what's it called? The, uh, the sacrum. The ilium has a low profile, accurate, which is accurate, but the sacrum uh, should be much taller because they, they had the uh, spinal processes that were really high. While we're talking about the legs, let's talk about the feet, which are terrible. These are really primitive feet to put on a, on a late Jurassic dinosaur. Uh, it, it sort of has lizard feet, uh, when it really should have more like an elephant foot, but with three toes in the back and five toes actually in the front, but only the innermost two had uh, claws or hooves. I should say hooves because they, they had pads under the feet, just like an elephant, but the, the toes projected out a little more, so they're sort of halfway between a claw and a hoof. In fact, when Marsh found these, I suppose he didn't find them himself, but when Marsh described these, uh, the second species he named, which we're not sure is actually a species, despite what we've just found in Portugal, uh, he called it ungulatus. The, the species was ungulatus, which means hoofed. So, and, and he thought it was like a, a big, lizard pangolin. So, I mean, that's all he knew about it was that, hey, this definitely has hooves. So the, the feet are important. It's the size of an elephant. It, ha it can't walk on its ankles. It has to walk on its toes. As far as posture goes, we're actually not bad either, uh, at least in front of the back legs. The uh, Stegosaurus's posture is actually pretty uh, famous because it's very dramatic with the, the rounded back going into the hip. Uh, it's dragging its tail, though, and that's just shameful. Its tail is really skinny, too. <laughs> like, Stegosaurus's tail was its primary weapon, so it was very muscular. It was flexible. It actually lacked osteoderm, so it was flexible, but it was flexible horizontally. Uh, so it wouldn't have had the, you know, straight out, like a, uh, maybe a, a hadrosaur or really any ornithopod, but, but it would have been off the ground at least. Let's talk about the plates. They're not bad. They're at least kite-shaped, which is more than you see in a lot of Stegosaurus toys. Uh, but really, for starters, there should be more variation in the size. Like, it's cool that they have it go sort of real small to real big to real small again in a smooth curve, because that's what Stegosaurus had, which again is really unique for a Stegosaurian. Like mostly they sort of have abrupt changes once you get to the hip. But uh, the ones over the, the, the hip should be very large and the ones on the neck and the end of the tail should be very small, especially the neck. The largest plates would be like a tenth of the length of the entire creature. So if it's like a 20 foot creature, a two foot plate. And that's two feet wide and two feet tall. Um, the ones over the neck aren't bad, but as you go farther back, it should be, they should be raked backwards more and more. Especially, this is probably a stenops, so they can probably get away with this, but if it were bigger, like Armatus, then definitely rake them back. They have the plates uh, arranged in a staggered, where they're not right across from each other. We have no idea if that's accurate, but that's what you see a lot in the reconstructions, and I'm prepared to say, yeah, go for it. That, that makes sense. Makes a lot more sense than having one row, because then they don't all fit. Incidentally, as far as numbers go, it's probably got the right number of plates. It varied, obviously. Now let's talk about the Thagomizer, because that is terrible. It's tiny, and this animal would have been eaten by allosaurs almost immediately. They need to be bigger, like the, the length of the spikes on the Thagomizer would have been about as long, if not longer, than the, the tallest plates on its back. Um, they need to be closer to the tip of the tail, and they need to be horizontal. They, you tend to see on toys, they'll always put the, the Thagomizer arranged sort of vertically, or at least in a V. They were more horizontal than V-shaped, because the way it used it was to swing it horizontally. On the subject of Stegosaurus's tail, when Marsh first found it, it wasn't the first one, it was one of the specimens he described, uh, he noticed a space in the pelvis area, 
Uh, it actually exists in sauropods too, but he saw it in Stegosaurus first. And he theorized that since its brain is so exceptionally small, its brain is like the size of a dog's brain, but it's an animal the size of an elephant, so it couldn't have been very smart. Admittedly, you don't have to be very smart when all you're doing is eating the food that's in front of your face and swinging your tail at anything that looks at you funny, but still, uh, tiny brain. He figured it needed uh, help, and it probably, he figured it must have had a second brain in its tail to control the reflexes in its tail. The only reason I mention this is because Pacific Rim, a 2013 major motion picture, perpetuated the myth that dinosaurs could have second brains. And especially considering that it was a scientist character that said it. I mean, I love Charlie Day, but guys, no second brain. It was probably just the gland that provides the, the fluid for the neurological system. But not a second brain. Stop, stop making dinosaurs seem dumb. And that's really all I need to cover on the Stegosaurus. This has been Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong. Please uh, like, comment, and subscribe, or even go to thegeekgroup.org where you can find out how to become a member and donate, and we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon. What? That was fine. I laughed during. We have room tone. God damn it, I didn't know you were gonna jump. Neither did I.